Hi everybody, um, I'm Joanne Pollock and I'm here today with Carolyn Sharp in her beautiful studio in Elora. So um, this is our first IG Live, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit like the blind leading the blind, but anyway, uh, here we go. So um, I am in Elora with, with Carolyn and I'm thrilled to be here actually, Carolyn. Um, it's great and you and I have have had a wonderful relationship with each other for quite a long time. Many years. Yeah. Many years. Mm -hmm. um, and you were one of the first artists that I um, I stumbled upon uh, on probably the Elora Fergus studio tour mm -hmm. and uh, fell in love with your work. So um, as you can see, we're here in your studio and enjoying um, the work behind us. And um, you certainly are a fantastic colorist. Thank you. Um, and you use, you're an abstractionist, of course, and that's uh, primarily what, uh, what, you're, what you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but your use of color is exceptional, and, Thank you. Um, and it is expressive, and it's joyful. And you've talked about um, your philosophy with art as being one where um, it, as a Canadian in particular, you are... Um, quite um, inspired by the land and the water in our country. Absolutely, yeah, definitely, yeah. So, um, how long have you been painting, Carolyn? About 15 years now, and um, the reason I started painting was I, I opened up a gallery shop in my hometown, Laura, uh, in 2003 or four. And I had uh, many, many local artists in there. And I just, I loved the art, I loved the artist. And, and um, after a couple of years, one of the artists um, said to me, well, you know, you love it so much, why don't you try doing art? And, I'm, and she said, anyone can do this as long as they have a passion for it and work hard at it. And so I did, I started taking courses and um, with the best artists that I could find and the ones that I loved their art. And um, I just started going from there. And I never had my own art for sale in my, my shop gallery, um, but I did represent over 26 Canadian artists. Wow. And um, I also, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. So that's when I began my journey and um, my art's always kind of been a, a part-time thing. I've done many, many group shows and some sh solo shows over the years, but I never really um, started it full-time until this past year, well, in 2020, when the pandemic hit. And um, all of a sudden, I had the opportunity to do my art full-time, and I just... Uh, off you went. Uh, off I went. Off you went. Off went. In fact, we should talk about that, and I'm sure many of the viewers will be interested to know that um, 2020 was a great year for you. It was wonderful. When I, 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 I also, I have a social media business. I've had it for five years, and um, so for five years I was posting for other people, businesses, um, art groups, uh, plein air shows, um, that sort of a thing, and also uh, advising artists and uh, getting them set up on social media, but really ignored my own social media um, until last summer. And um, as soon as I started paying attention and sharing my process and uploading my art, um, then everything just sort of took off. And I started selling art, and it just, I was amazed and at uh, the, how people are things right. really, really buying off of Instagram in particular, for me, in my case, and people from across Canada, and I was just amazed. And yeah, it was, 2020 was sales-wise the biggest I've ever had. Uh, for art sales and yeah um well i can probably uh, vouch for your expertise carolyn as a <laughs> as a if you're looking for a social media um guru and expert carolyn 
um, is the person that you should consider. Um, she's extremely knowledgeable and she's very patient for people that are novice social media. Mm -hmm. People, um, you're, you're incredibly patient and you're incredibly um, uh, knowledgeable with what you do. So I'm really um, very pleased to hear that 2020 was a great year for you. That's mm -hmm. not been the case for um, a lot of artists. So um, let's talk about your beautiful studio that you have here in your backyard. You're very fortunate to have such a gorgeous studio. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when I talk to artists about um, finding uh, their space and to treat their studio as sacred space, mm -hmm. and it is a place that you want to go into to be inspired and calm and it provides um, solace and reflection in order for you to really produce your best work. Mm -hmm. um, so you came up with the idea that you wanted to turn your studio into your own retreat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fantastic concept. Mm -hmm. And tell us um, how you managed to do that and um, how successful it has been. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always wanted to, to go away and do a sabbatical, mini sabbatical art retreat uh, all over the world. I've been thinking about that for a long time. Um, and when the pandemic hit, I think a lot of artists were, were sort of stunned. Um, all the shows were canceled. What are we going to do now? How are we going to promote our art? And, and it was a little bit depressing at first because mm -hmm. um, uh, for myself, I, I like to have um, shows planned to work towards. Um, so what I decided was I would just have a mini sabbatical at my in my own studio. Why not? And it was my opportunity to try different techniques mm -hmm. and uh, order keep ordering art supplies and try different uh, materials. Uh, which I did, and I've just been having a ball. I've been filling up sketchbooks with um, all kinds of ideas um, and collage work and uh, just color stories, uh, things I want to try. And yeah, it's been really fun. And so I haven't been down about uh, any of the shows being cancelled, um, it's been a great opportunity to explore. I think that's really important, um, is that you have taken this time to explore. And I, when I have phoned you or I've, I've spoken to you, um, you tell me that you're really excited to go into your studio. You love being in your space. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is, and it is a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and your space is, you know, tidy. It's, it's organized and, um, and you put a sign on your door when you come in and you say, do not disturb, mm -hmm. I'm going to work from 12 until 5. You have a young family. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it, it is your time that is set aside right. for you. And I think that's really important to do that. I think it is. There mm -hmm. needs, I'm lucky that my studio uh, is separate from the house. Um, and I, I, I needed to get into the mindset. I, I decided I was going to really um, do my art full time and um, which I've been wanting to do for many years but always felt like I was really just too busy uh, doing social media for other people. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah I think once you make that commitment mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know what to do um, you just set it, set it up as it, it's a business. Art is a business. If right. you want to sell your art right, um, and I certainly do. Um, it keeps me motivated. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next step is uh, finding inspiration and staying inspired. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's trying different techniques. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun. You, you are an artist who has managed to um, figure out that marketing is every bit as important as producing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of artists, they... Um, they don't want to market. They want to have someone else market for them and they just want to create. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you know, as you say, marketing uh, art is a business, mm -hmm. and so you really have to uh, consider it that way mm -hmm. and be business minded and be um, determined to mm -hmm. embrace embrace uh, social media as best you can, mm -hmm. um, and make a concerted effort to understand that it's not just about producing beautiful work. There's also that other component. Definitely, there's a big business mm -hmm. side There's a of big it. business side of Yes, it. absolutely. And um, you're right, a lot of artists don't want to have mm -hmm. to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, but the artists who do want to sell work consistently, um, they really need to get their head around they that. Do. They and do. get some guidance. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I've done um, for both myself and for other artists is I've created a Facebook group called Instagram Tips for Artists. And um, it really, it's just giving some basic information about how to promote yourself on Instagram. We talk about reels and, you know, all kinds of tips um, and tricks and things. And um, so it, it's been really great to, to keep people motivated and uh, artists who are unsure of what to do, um, they can go there and uh, ask questions and in a, a very safe environment, nobody you know is going to think your question is dumb or anything. It's, a, it's all, you know, They're every, every question is valid. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's a safe place for people to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been, um, talking about your Instagram audits and things, and some artists have been contacting me um, to do Instagram audits. So explain what an Instagram audit uh, is. Well, um, we all want people to follow us on Instagram and see our art, and we, we need to share our process, and it, what, our Instagram page is really for showing people the behind the scenes uh, world of being an artist, um, so when you, before you even want people to come to your page, you want your page to look really great. Yeah. You want to have For sure. um, a really a clear message of, uh, who you are, what type of art you do, what your inspiration is, and, um, and, and just have an attractive looking grid and, um, you know, and, and sort of choose your niche. Uh, so it's easy for people to understand uh, what, is, what it is you do and makes them want to follow your page. Um, so before you start asking for followers and wanting followers, make sure your, your Instagram page, your grid, and your, your profile look the best that they can look and that your message is clear. And that's something that you can help people figure out is to figure out their brand. Yes. Um, and that their brand needs to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always, when I uh, do one-on-one -on -one art consultation, um, I talk about um, uh, honoring your brand, first of all. You have to define what your brand is mm -hmm. and then honoring it. So if you're an abstract artist, um, then that's what you're going to talk about mm -hmm. and you're going to um, you're going to show your best, uh, best images based on the fact that you're a colorist and you're an abstractionist. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to go down the, the, the road of, uh, you know, showing some photography or showing uh, some very realistic right. um, paint, paintings or because portraits or that's not who you are. That's right. And a lot of artists get kind of muddled up and they yes. get lost in all of yes, that. Yes, right? absolutely. I find um, mm -hmm. a lot of artists want to show their range of art, um, but it, I think that that is, can be confusing uh, to the people looking at your, your Instagram grid. Um, so you really need to focus in on the art that you love doing the, mo the most mm -hmm. and that's what you want to be sharing. For sure. Um, it doesn't mean you're, you know, committing to just one style of art, but you, you do, you, you actually kind of should sort of figure out what your niche is going to be For sure. and go with that. For sure. Um, because there are gallerists, um, 
that are going to be looking at your Instagram There certainly are. Page. There um, are, indeed. And just like on your, your website, mm -hmm. it should be similar. Mm -hmm. I don't show every kind of art that you do. Um, show the art that you love doing right now the most. Mm -hmm. What drives you, what, what's inspiring to you. And that's what you should go with. Because you've talked about um, you, once you committed yourself to actually um, getting on board with some of the fundamentals about Instagram and what works and what doesn't work, and you've um, established your success relatively quickly, Carolyn. You said that you, you know, you you used to not work at it very hard, um, and then once you made the commitment to mm -hmm. do it, um, you found that you were able to. Um, gain a lot more traction and therefore a lot more sales mm -hmm. um, by doing that. But we, we, we talked about something interesting before we got started and that is that it's really not about the number of followers that That's you right. have, mm -hmm. right? That's so right. talk a little bit about um, a lot of artists get caught up in numbers. Right. So... Right. Um, you don't... I, what I realized, I mean, when I started working on my social media page myself was um, as soon as I started sharing uh, my art and my process um, I, I just it was, I sort of looked at it as sort of keeping a diary an art diary of what I'm doing my, my art artist life and people started following me um, but I also started selling art um, people want to see the behind the scenes. They they love seeing an artist's life. What we do, we may think that it's kind of boring, but it's not to a lot of other people. Um, and it I think it makes the art more interesting when you start showing your process. Um, and I just people started contacting me and and buying my art once I started showing my process and talking about my art and and what it's like to be an artist from day to day. And when I first started paying attention to my page, I had, I think, about 700 followers. I've now doubled that fairly quickly. Um, but you don't you need 10,000 followers to sell a lot of you art. You do not. Um, because, you know, I'm the perfect, uh, it, situation for that. I mean, I, when I had 700 followers and started paying attention and sharing my art, I started selling. So it's really about um, being committed, realizing that it is hard work. It is hard you, work. You do need to think about it mm -hmm. and plan it out. Mm -hmm. And um, But once you do that and get into the groove of, of doing it, it, it becomes easier. And um, yeah, people... People do buy art Become interested. from social media. I, I think something can be said for, of course, posting regularly. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you post every day or you post every couple of days, you do have to keep engaged and you do have to, um, again, establish relationships with somebody that expresses interest in your work. Yes. So they might say, Carolyn, I love that piece, the color is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you mm -hmm. to respond back to that person mm -hmm. and say, oh, I used a, my favorite color of yellow mm -hmm. or what, what, and you begin to engage in a conversation. Yeah, you talk, talking about your right. inspiration for your art right. is really right. important. Right. Um, people can relate to it more when you do that. And um, yeah, they, they they just start loving your work when they, they want understand to know more. What, what's behind it. Yeah. But that being said, um, I, I see lots of Instagram feeds that um, are, um, they're not um, consistent, they're not interesting enough for people to want to uh, follow someone. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, it's important that you make your posts engaging. Yes, and absolutely. interesting and novel, mm -hmm. and you're doing something. You're still honoring yourself and your artwork and what mm -hmm. you believe in. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you're not just throwing something up there for the sake of getting out a post um, on any given day. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I I don't personally feel the need to post every day. I maybe post about three four times a week. 
which is fine. Um, but uh, when I put a post out there, you know, I, I try and ask questions. Um, something that I like to do. I, I, I really appreciate getting help uh, naming my paintings. And that's I a thought great, that was brilliant. It's a great way to engage I people. I loved to tell people what you did, Carolyn, because that was awesome. Well, these paintings behind you here, the very colorful ones. Right. Um, yes, I started, I, I really had no idea. These are kind of new to me. And um, yeah, so I started, I, I asked people, well, what do you think I should name these paintings? And some of the names were just fantastic. Um, that one over there is Tutti Frutti. I think this is Blueberry Parfait. Anyway, they, they just became really fun, a fun way of um, engaging people. Right. Um, and yeah, so try and, um, and, and I've, I've made Instagram friends. I've never met these people. They're other artists mostly, um, some are collectors and they're interested in what I do and we chat back and forth on Instagram um, through, you know, some of them we go into direct messaging and uh, some of them just uh, leave comments and, and I love it. I love when people leave comments and about my art and, and uh, it's, it's great. You sort of feel a connection uh, even though it's online, it's still a connection mm -hmm. and yeah, it's wonderful. and. Uh, a lot of people that follow me are other artists, uh, which is great. Uh, nobody understands your, your art process more than other artists. Um, but um, other artists also buy art. They certainly do. I have a house full of art from <laughs> other artists <laughs> all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so some people say to me, oh, how do I get followers who aren't artists? I said, I, I, I just don't be concerned about that. Artists buy art. They do. And um, just share your process and who you are and what inspires you. Absolutely. Um, we, um, I wanted to talk for a little bit about um, how you have continued to nurture your buyers, whether it's past buyers mm -hmm. or it's, it's new buyers. It's very important that you maintain relationships with your buyers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the 80-20 rule. 20% uh, of your clients bring you 80% of your business. Right. So right. how have you managed to um, engage with people that have bought from you in the past? I send uh, emails uh, out, so I collect their emails um, with their permission, of course, and I just send out, send out a monthly email saying what I'm up to, and um, whenever I produce a new little series of work, I send an email sharing my latest work and talking about what shows I have coming up. I have a show coming up tomorrow, um, starting tomorrow. It's a virtual show. It's called, called uh, Guelph uh, Virtual Art on the Street. It's normally um, a show in the city of Guelph, a one-day show every year. It's been going for uh, a very long time, many, many years. Uh, so it starts tomorrow. And um, so I just let um, people know what's going on in my art world and once a month seems is fine as far as I'm concerned and yeah so that's how I stay connected and uh, otherwise we connect through uh, Instagram or Facebook well social media is not going away <laughs> no. and mm -hmm. um, we may end up with a hybrid of um, in-person versus virtual but um, mm -hmm. this world is here to stay, mm -hmm. and um, so people have to embrace it, whether it's willingly or or not. Mm -hmm. um, this is the this is the way it's going to be now. Um, so yeah, um, I guess we've talked about the tips that um, you've learned using uh, Instagram the best, mm -hmm. and um, you are a great ambassador for this area you have certainly um, uh, been a cheerleader, a mentor, um, a shining light in the Alora Fergus community um, to really be um, supportive and encouraging. I think last year you were one of 10 artists that did push forward with the Fergus Alora tour. There was an outdoor mm -hmm. show. Right. Um, 
the Allure for Studio Tour has been going on for over 40 years and it's over two weekends in the fall. Last fall it was cancelled, uh, but there were 11 of us that wanted to go ahead with just an outdoor show. Um, so what we did was we moved our studios studio show to be just an outdoor show in, in our yards. So it was... Uh, it, it, it worked out really well. Everybody um, was very uh, careful and wore masks, even though we were, it was all outdoors and spread apart, and uh, it went very well. Now this year, the Alar Frick Studio Tour will be going ahead again. Um, the last weekend in September, first weekend of October, I believe. Um, so yeah, hopefully everything will be somewhat back to normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Carolyn, um, it's been a pleasure to be here. Um, I yes. have, you know, I've really looked forward to working with you, and I know that I will continue to work with you again in the future for all of your advice and your wonderful guidance through um, your social media tips and tricks. So, for those of you that are looking for some help um, in that regard, Carolyn is. Um, is, is fantastic and I do hope that you search her out for her her wisdom um, so thank you very much for joining us today we did it Carolyn our first IG live I think we did okay we're hoping that it's working okay <laughs> I hope so <laughs> and um, we look forward Carolyn and I were brainstorming before we got started today and we're talking ab about exploring some possibilities of maybe doing some blogs uh, together to, um, to see what we can come up with, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So if people need to find your studio, Carolyn, or contact you, how can, how can they best do that? Well, they can follow me on Instagram at Carolyn underscore Sharp, S-H-A-R-P. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Carolyn Sharp Art. And my, my website is carolyn-sharp.com. So you can find me through all of those. Um, if you're interested in uh, social media tips for artists, uh, search for the Facebook group, um, which is just social media, or Instagram tips for artists on Facebook, and join our group. And yeah, if you, yeah, just, there's lots of ways to find me. Lots of ways. And it's sharp, S-H-A-R-P. There is no E on the end. And it's Carolyn, C-O-R-L-Y-N. C-A-R-L-Y-N. Yeah, yeah. Great. So I'll be linked on here. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope that you can look forward to, uh, to future talks um, that I will be exploring with other artists. And for those of you that are from afar, um, thank you for joining in. We're happy to, uh, to see you today and have a wonderful creative weekend and stay inspired and start to think about your social media. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.